Hey guys, it's me. Good morning. It's Knowledge by Nikki and Nikki Smith. And I have got a lot to say today. Oh my God. Uh, I've been really thinking about this salon owners conference that we're doing, guys. And I've gotten a lot of uh, questions from a lot of you all that watch me every morning on Facebook Live. And you all want to know, you know, salon owners want to know how, how to do this thing. How do we uh, really get these salons together? How do we do it? So what I decided to do, I wrote a book, oh God, probably about 10 years ago. And it was called Successful Business Strategies. Hey, Tabitha, how are you? And Lisa. And what this book did was, at the time, I was still a salon owner of many, 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 many years and it helped me define what success looked like to me let me tell you one thing i've learned about people and salons and and just people in general not not really salons i'm gonna go there in a minute but success is not the same to everyone i don't know if 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 you all on this uh, live re realize that success is not the same to everybody everybody does not see success the same and so as I was doing classes and traveling, and I was doing a lot of international travel at this time, so it wasn't just a United States thing. I was actually kind of doing little surveys in and out of the country. I realized that success, after I narrowed it down, was pretty much defined in, in three ways. Meaning, if people achieve this thing, is when they obviously felt successful. So let me break that down a little bit for you. Now, more of this will be talked about, obviously, at the conference. But the first thing is, obviously, most of us think success is about money. It's not, guys. Success, people, when they consider themselves to be at that pinnacle level of success, it's not just about the money for everybody. It's not. So, obviously, there is a core group that that is true. That once they get to a certain financial position, I'm here, I've arrived, I'm successful. We know that is true for some people. Then you have some other people, and I did this survey for about four years, just in and out of the country, just randomly to get people's ideas about what success was to them or what it looks like. Then there were people, and, and my husband who's on this call, this is definitely him. There were people that have what we call philanthropic desires. There were people that I don't care how much money they could be making, if they did not see their gift being accepted loved and 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 being used to build other people they were not going to be happy these are the people that will give away everything these are the people that will go and pick up their lives and go help people in puerto rico and help people in the 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 houston uh area when they had the hurricane issues and these are those people their whole goal with their business is to literally what i call plant a seed and watch it grow they want to filter into people. That is what they want to do. That is what success is to them. Hey, Eddie, how are you? It's my partner there. Then there's another group, guys. There's another group that just likes to duplicate themselves over and over and over. We call these people, they like things. These are people that if they open a salon, they're going to get it running. They're going to gonna get it halfway situated and then they're going to open another one and then they're going to open another one and then they're going to open another one Th this is the mindset of that person is that one is into people that's the philanthropic desires one is into things that's the people that like to duplicate themselves over and over and the other group success looks like money to them now let me tell you when i did this and i did a lot of research on this I realized that from the salon owner's perspective, let's go to salon owners now, they're still amongst those three different types of people, okay? And I'm saying this loosely, you can be a little bit of both, and but you're usually gonna be predominantly one. But what I found was all three of those ideas of success required a different working model, meaning the salon model, the setup, how they hired, who they hired, where they positioned themselves, all of those, those three things totally dictated how your salon needed to be set up. So let me tell you what I did. Now, I wrote this. I wrote this, but this is from tons of information. This is my book here. I've had this book for about 10 years, 
And I'm going to just break down a little bit of depending on the business model or depending on the person that you are, how your salon should be set up. So I'm going to talk about the people who just want to make money. Let, let's talk about that for a minute. If you just want to make money, and obviously, you see, I got all this stuff on here. Obviously, I can't go through all of it. But if you come to Atlanta, November 5th and 6th, I will be in Atlanta. I was just asked yesterday to do something concerning my salon owners class, uh, seminar, which is in November of 2018. I decided that I'm going to do that. It's free. You're going to have an hour and a half of me just giving you some salon pearls, I call it. And I'm going to be talking about this. I'm going to be talking about how to define what it is that you want to do and then how to set it up. So let's let's talk about money for one thing. This, this is under the Successful Business Strategies course. First of all, if you are a person, your whole goal is I'm opening a, a salon flat out to make money, period. You know, I help people and do all that other stuff, but my goal is to make money. Then the first thing you're going to have to consider when you're structuring is your location. That old statement, location, 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 that is true here. If you want to make money, you're going to have to be willing to spend a little more money on your location. Your location is going to be the most important thing in this model of you making money for two reasons. Your location, if it's in an area, and this I'm going to give to you all, we're going to talk more about this tomorrow, you need to be in an area, if your location is is top-notch and you got the traffic you're going to need to make money without having to spend a lot of money on marketing, you need to find the closest major corner to your location that you're either in or want to be in. You need to go to that village, that city that it's in, the village hall, ask them how many cars go through that location from 9 to 5 on weekdays. If from 9 to 5 you have at least 1 million cars that go through that location, then that is what's considered a high profitability location. I don't know if you all have ever noticed, when you see those guys sometimes standing out on the street, they got on the, the construction looking jackets and they have this little stick with this silver, almost looks like a meter on the top of it, they are clocking cars. When they clock cars, they are able to tell you in this intersection, X amount of people go through here on any given day within a certain hours. So if you want to make money, you need to know how many cars go through this intersection within an eight hour period. And your idea of a good location needs to be at least a million cars. And it's not hard depending on the location. Now, obviously, if you got that type of location, you're going to spend a little money for it. Okay, but let me just give you a quick synopsis because obviously this is a whole chapter full of information. When you put yourself in a location like that, you're going to be spending a lot less money on marketing. I hear from you all all the time talking about you, you the owners are sick of staff and they can't get the right staff. You're never going to be in a situation where your staff is going to be hard to come by. Now, you still got to get the right ones, but you're going to have what they call the pick of the litter when it comes to staffing because you're in a location where people see you, people know you're there, people want to be where they have a lot of walk-ins, all right? So this is going to be an attractive, valuable scenario to your location. Also, if you really engulf in retail, and I mean you get yourself knee-deep into retail where at least 30% or more of your square footage is dedicated to retail, you'll be making money off of retail from people that don't even visit your salon because you'll be able to line it up in a window somewhere visible where people just walking by will be able to see it. So A, you're going to save money on marketing, you're going to make money on retail, and you're probably never going to have an empty chair as far as people working in your salon. This is also a scenario where commission is sometimes an option. When you're in a high traffic area where you have people that are walk, driving by, walking by constantly, you're gonna be able to offer people, maybe coming out of school or somebody just starting in the industry, you will be able to offer them commission and get them to accept a certain type of commission because you have the walk-ins that can help them build. 
This is something that is very important. If you want to make money, you're going to have to be willing to spend it up front to get the location that can in turn help you build this financial aspect of what you're trying to do. It is absolutely necessary. Okay, what is that? How can the people who live in the country build clients? That was last week, Lee Tony. Text me on 708-798-7900. And then I'll be able, how, wait, how can the people who live in the country build clients? I'm not sure what exactly you're saying, but text me on 708-798-7900. I save every Facebook video that I do. So I'll pull that up for you and you'll be able to see it. Text me at that line. Okay, so back to making money. All right. So that's one of the things. Now, there are several others. There's a whole list of things that become important to your business model if you're about making money. Okay, but let, let's shift for a moment. I gave you a couple pearls there. I can't give you everything. Come out to Atlanta and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more. And then obviously the Salon Owners Conference, we're going to dig real deep into it. So that's people that want to make money. Okay. That is one of the things you're going to have to put in your business model. I'm going to the next one now. The next one is what we call personal accomplishment. That's things. That's people, they just like stuff. They just want to literally open a salon. They'll probably have a lot of chairs. They'll have a, a multiple salons. These are people who think franchise-minded. These are people, if they were into real estate, they're going to buy homes and flip them. Buy homes and flip them. They, they like accumulation of stuff. They like diverse portfolios. They like a lot of stuff going on. So let me talk to you about the salon owners with this mentality. The first thing you should be considering is not your location. You do not have to put yourself in a really high traffic location, okay? I'm not saying go to the bottom. Now, by the way, there are three different types of location if you're renting. Most people are renting and they're not buying their location. You have retail space, you have office space, and you have industrial space. They're all priced differently and they all work differently for this particular model that I'm talking about. This model, the personal accomplishment, people that just like a lot of stuff, they want a lot of shops, a lot of whatever. Your biggest thing is you're going to have to have only booth renters. Commission will not work in this scenario. And I'm gonna give you a little tip. If this is you and you like a lot of stuff, that means you're gonna have to have the flexibility of moving around a lot because you're gonna have a whole lot of stuff that you need to manage. The person that you need to look for in this scenario are ex-salon owners. Ex-salon owners are the absolute best people when you need to be flexible and you need to move around and keep up with all your stuff, ex salon owners will be the people that, now when I say ex salon owner, let, let me back up. I'm not saying somebody who owned a salon for 40 years, cause you gotta be careful now. Somebody who owned a salon that long will try to take over your space. But I'm talking about someone who maybe owned a salon for say five to 10 years, they failed at it, tired of it, whatever the reason was, they will become the best people the best people to do that guys because they know what it means to be responsible you need people that are self-managed you don't need people that you got to tell them what to do you need people that are good critical thinkers you need people when you want a bunch of stuff this is just one of the aspects of this business model you don't have to get retail or don't have to get expensive space you can fall somewhere in the middle but the people you hire is going to be key in this scenario the people you hire, what we call contract laborers, you don't want no parts of commission because you ain't got time for that because you need to be everywhere. Let me tell you another thing that's going to have to be true. This is just also in this. Again, come to Atlanta and I'll be able to run this down for you for free. Okay. Another thing you're going to need to do, if you like a lot of stuff, you're going to have to get your personal life in order because people with a lot of stuff need a lot of insurance. They need to have good credit. So when something goes wrong, they got a credit card or some means of money to fix stuff to, that breaks, to fix stuff that was destroyed. Your personal credit and life perspective, if you like a lot of stuff, is going to be very important to get that in order so you can manage all this stuff because something is always going to go wrong. 
So your whole business model of how you set up your business, your location, you can fall somewhere in the middle. You don't have to have major traffic space. You also are going to need to only focus on booth renters. Commission is absolutely not going to work in this scenario. It's not going to work. Okay. There are other things that I have in here as well, but of course we only own here for a half hour. So let me talk about the people and this book I wrote this book I, this is information that I've gotten from a thousand different sources and so this book I wrote it's called booth rental versus commission because we're gonna get to that then we talk about philanthropy these are people who really only open their business for the sole purpose of being able to help someone else grow they want to just plant what they do help other people, do things for other people. These are people, when you watch all the programs or some of them that are on TV now, these people are on TV. They're setting up construction companies just with the intent of building homes for uh, people that are much, uh, deserving, that have been given of themselves for a hundred years. And, and now they now will get their just reward for being that way. There are businesses that are set up all the time that this is their idea. So let me tell you also in this space, What's going to be the most crucial aspect to this space is almost like the people that like things. It's going to be the interviewing process. It's going to be you having the ability to find people in your space that have the same heart that you do. The worst thing in a world that a person who has a big heart like this that will give the shoes off their feet is to have you're a giver when you're a giver you can't have a bunch of takers around you it does not work because you your soul will be vexed if you're a person you're opening this salon so that you can just be of service everywhere you're the person that's going to do the homeless projects and people going back to school and you have made this a part of how your business works is that we all pick up and we all go and we take care of the people that are lost the people that are underprivileged this is what we do the people you hire are going to be crucial to your success you cannot have takers when you're a giver it does not work okay people that just want to suck up everything and walk away so when you are this person if you are the person that knows this is your business you wouldn't have it any other way you gonna give everything you got to build and help other people your interviewing process has to be real serious that means you can't hire people on the spot you gotta look you gotta think on them pray on them interview them again you have to really spend a lot more energy getting the right people in your location okay because you're the person that's going to want people to go with you to to do these pro you can't you can't carry this type of a load on your own it's impossible to do so that's in short the three people or three type of business models that i've actually done research on this i surveyed for years trying to find out and pick salon owners minds on how it is that they want because they wanted to achieve success but they didn't first know what success meant to them. Those that just want to make money, if all they have is a bunch of, of babies in there that just need to be nurtured and, and need you to, to help them and they got these big hearts and they're willing to go all over the world with you but you're not making money, you're not going to be happy. You're still going to feel like your business is failing. For those that want a lot of stuff and you want to duplicate yourself over and over, if you find yourself getting stuck, in one uh, position or one business because it's not doing enough for you to flip it and go do something else, you're going to feel like a hostage and it's not going to work for you. Okay. So these are like, again, I can't, it, this is a six hour course y'all. So I can't go through all of this in, in 30 minutes, but I just want to give you a little tidbit. So now I'm going to keep going for a minute. After we do that, we now are going to start after we define the key thing is to define what success means to you. Once we do that, my group is and myself, we're going to, if you come to the Salon Owners Conference, we're going to help you do that. We got to first figure you out. Are you one that just want to make money? Are you one that just wants to, to duplicate yourself, maybe franchise, build more businesses? Or are you one that really your whole goal of opening a business was just to help people? Period. Once you define that, now we can start helping you build your business in a way that works for you. 
Okay, that's how that works. It does not work any other way. Or you'll find yourself spinning your wheels, spending money, nothing's happening. But as I started this article, I, I'm sure you all noticed what the topic was. I got that from John C. Maxwell. He says, and let me let me read it right. It said, it's the last statement in this book. It says, you cannot achieve what you have not defined. And that's the truth. You'll be spinning your wheels, trying, 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 trying to do stuff but you don't even really know where you're going. So I want to help my salon owners. I believe we can be more successful in this thing that we chose calling calling uh, salon ownership. But the thing is, when you decided to be a salon owner, you have to realize if all you wanted to do was just have somewhere where you could work and you don't have anybody to tell you what to do and you don't have to deal with X, Y, Z that you dealt with when you work for somebody else, you got to know it's bigger than that. Because now you got employees. Now you got other laborers. Not, it, it's bigger than me. I'm, that's my connection, guys. You can not only open a salon based off of you. It doesn't work. And those of you all that have already hit me up, 708-798-7900, if you want to come to the Salon Owners Conference, it's not till next year in November, text me your email and I'll send you info. For those of you all that have already hit me up, this is what you're telling me. You went into this with a very naive perspective of what it is that you were going to do. You really didn't know what the definition of business was. You just knew you didn't like where you were. Well, now it's time for us to define it, which means we got to figure you out. Once we figure you out, then we can define what we need to do so now we can change your existing location or sometimes you may have to shut it down and start it over this happens to a lot of us in business or we may even have to shift you in another direction that now you can start working the business model that defines your idea of success that is the key now we in this we also talk about the whole booth rental and commission aspect we talk about all that this whole book let me show you this whole book talks about all of that stuff, okay? I have it at the class in Atlanta. I got a ton of them, and it also comes on disc. This book breaks down the, the, the what you need to have in place, how your business model needs to be set up, and it also will talk to you the differences, the real differences in booth rental versus commission so you know what type of group you need to have in your salon. Now, the, the people with philanthropy desires. Let me go back to that because I'm talking about booth rental and commission. Those are people that need both. You got to have booth rental and commission in your spot. You need both. The reason you need both is because you are actually going to have a certain group that every project, because you want to do, you want to help everybody that needs help. You're going to have that certain group that wants to go out and wants to actually do these things with you. But then people with this big of a heart forget that they still got bills to pay, that they still have to make sure the lights stay on and the gas stays on. So your booth renters in this scenario who may or may not go will become the stability for your business. They'll become the money that you know you got because you'll give it all away. You'll give it all away. You'll let people do everything for free, forgetting that we still got bills we got to pay. So your booth renters in this scenario will be the stability. They'll be the finances that you get that will actually make sure that things get done. And then I call them your, your soldiers or your armor bearers or whatever you want to call them will be those commission people that every time you say, hey, let's go take care of the homeless. Let's go take care of kids that don't have prom dresses and can't get their hair done or whatever. Let's go. take. That'll be that group. You're going to need both which means your entire physical structure of your salon may have to be set up where you got two sides. Where you have one side that's this, because commission and booth rental don't, rental don't do good in the same space. Commission people, when they see booth renters that's grinding, they have a problem sitting because they see people moving and they sitting waiting on people. So you have to make sure that all of this is put in place based off of what it is that you're trying to do. It is absolutely, positively necessary. Tina, I see you say call me when, uh, hey, call me when you can. I called you yesterday. Okay, I'll call you back when I get off the phone or get off of Facebook Live. This is something, guys, that is absolutely necessary. So let me, real quick, because we only got a few minutes. 
I got the whole booth rental. Now, tomorrow, our topic is going to come from this, and it's going to be salon owners should never have to pay. That's the topic tomorrow. If you're the salon owner and you got all this other stuff going on in your shop, you should never have to take a dime out of your own pocket. Now, one dime to pay for anything in the business. Lisa, the name of the book is Booth Rental versus Commission. Lisa, my number's still the same. Call me, okay? Or text me. See? It's only 50 bucks. I've had these for 10 years, guys, because I did this research real strong. Uh, let me talk about booth rental real quick. All right. Booth rental. Let me find the booth rental page in this book for you guys. I'm going to give you this real quick, and then I got to get off the phone, guys. Salon owners should never have to pay. That's tomorrow's subject. There is a formula for figuring out what your booth rental price should be. This is for the, the group that I said needs booth renters. I'm going to just run through it real quick. But we, you come see me in Atlanta or come that, text me. I'll get you the book. I got plenty of them. Come see me in Atlanta November 5th and 6th. Eddie has asked me to do this with pleasure. It's going to be before the show starts. So, Eddie, put that information up there. November 5th and 6th at the Doubletree in Atlanta. This is going to be an hour and a half. This seminar is only 40 bucks, guys. You get 40 classes for $40. Come on out to Atlanta. If you're anywhere close, come on out November 5th and 6th. But let me go through this real quick because I got to go to work, okay? Formula. This is how you figure out booth rental. I'm going to run through it real quick. You got to do rent plus electric plus gas plus water plus cable plus cleaning plus garbage pickup plus administrative payroll plus office supplies plus toilet paper plus paper towels plus towel service plus all insurance all maintenance and any miscellaneous you got to add all that stuff up okay we figuring out what these chairs are worth like an apartment okay you got to add all that stuff up you take the total monthly whatever that is you divide it by the number of laborers you got in your place minus you take you out of the equation okay you divide that by 52 and that will give you what one chair is worth one chair is it's like apartments, many apartments. That's what one chair is worth. Then you add 10% for miscellaneous and profit. Okay, some people add 20%. You add that, that will give you what a weekly chair is worth. Okay? No more of this just spitting out numbers $150 a week. How do you know? You don't know what it should be until you do the math. You have no idea. I got booth renters now. I did a conference at uh, Denise Michelle's Mentorship Miami. I did a private conference for 13 salon owners. I made them give me their expenses. What are your expenses? It was at least four out of that 13 that didn't even realize they were in the red. They just wasn't charging people enough. They hadn't done the math. You got to do the math, guys. You cannot shoot from the hip. I don't care if so-and-so charging two. No, 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 200. You got to do the math. You have to do the math. You got to figure out everything that you got to pay for. And then you got to divide that and you got to figure that out and add percentages so that you can come up with what that chair has to produce in order to make it work. Now, let me give you another tip. I, t I went out to to lunch with a friend of mine yesterday and she was telling me she has a, a salon suite set up uh, in downtown Chicago and she was saying that she's just really tired of seasoned stylists that don't want to grind. They want to not come in and complain about working and then obviously when they ain't making no money, they don't want to pay her rent. And So she's like, how can I combat that? I told her this and this I'm telling you all this. This is real. Even though they're booth renters, if you are a salon owner, you're going to have to help them. And I don't mean help them just by giving them information. If you want them to stay and if you want them to pay you your rent, you are going to have to initial, initially walk them through this. Meaning I gave her tips. These tips I gave last week, last Friday on Freedom Friday. So if y'all want that video, hit me up 708-798-7900. Tell me you want the video on building clients and I'll send that to you. Okay, I did it last Friday. But I told her that you're going to have to do it for them. Sometimes when people don't have drive or don't have the initiative, you may have to do it for I know you feel like they ain't paying me for all that. I shouldn't have to do all that. But if you want to keep chairs, you may have to light the torch first. Now, they may carry it. If it's a person that just needs a helping hand, they'll carry it from there. You literally may have to say, you know what? 
Let me talk to your clients. Let me explain. We're going to do something as a whole. We're going to do something as a whole shop. I'll be the one to introduce to the clients. I'll tell them I'll come up with the paperwork or if there's coupons or if you're doing it digitally, all kind of ways you can do this. Come up with scenarios where you can help them grow because if you don't, they're not going to make money. They're either going to complain about the fact that they ain't got money for rent or they're going to leave. So whether you like it or not, you're going to have to help them. Now, I say all that to say, because I got to get off, that if you know you're that kind of person, then your percentage that you add in for profit on your booth rental amount, you need to increase because now you got to do extra work. So instead of adding 10% after that, you may add 20 and let them know that this is what comes with it. I not only am providing you X, Y, Z, but I'm actually going to help you get there. They paying for it, okay? Now, obviously, if you already got a salon and you got booth renters, then this may be a little difficult, but everything goes up. There's nothing wrong with you coming, saying six months from now, you know, booth rental may have to go up 5% due because of whatever, whatever. You can come up with the language for that. So you come to my conference, I'll give you all the language. I even got forms. Y'all, I even got forms. They're called departure forms when, when you need to tell clients, don't come here no more. I have those too. We not we not a fit. All right. So come to my conference, guys. This is all I can give you today. 708-798-7900. Text me. You cannot leave a voicemail on that line. I do not return voicemails, but I will return text on that line. So please text me. Tell me you want information. That's all I got for you today. So it's a whole lot. Tomorrow, Freedom, Freedom Friday. I give you some free pearl stuff. I always make you pay for.